So hello, I'm Theodor and I will present you the Open BioDiv. As Lugo just said, this is a knowledge graph. This is a knowledge graph. Oops. Based on articles coming from uh, all the pens of journals and treatments coming from Platy. So uh, it uses a complicated workflow, which basically on the basis of the XMLs, we generate RDF treatments and those treatments are going into graph database. Based on the open BioDiv O ontology and on the top of that, <clears throat> we create uh, different indexes of, of the different data classes like taxonomic names, sequences, uh, authors and so on in Elasticsearch in order to offer also a REST API that can be uh, easily work with. And uh, to be able to also to build different applications based on that. So this is how the uh, homepage of the OpenBioDiff looks like. Uh, the cool thing is that uh, thanks to the, all the unique identifiers in, the, in those XMLs, <clears throat> once you find something, we can link back. But this is actually not the last version of my presentation. I just I just replied it in the morning. Okay, well, uh, anyway, so <clears throat> if you if you uh, search for something uh, in the literature application uh, exploration app, you can see that uh, the term you search is mentioned in different sections of the articles, and also you can see how many times in which exactly section this is mentioned. You get also a list of articles and for each article you can see exactly in what context the taxon is mentioned. And if you click on any of these sections, you will be redirected back to the original article, to the exact place where this thing is mentioned. And it is also highlighted so you can land directly there and continue reading and see actually if this is uh, useful for you or not. Uh, in OpenBioDiv, as I said, is a graph database. So it uh, use, uses SparkQL based on, uh, thanks to the SparkQL, you can uh, actually answer more complicated question like uh, this one, give me new taxonomic names within a taxon X that have been described using sequence, sequencing methodologies and places where their type materials have been deposited. Uh, thanks to the structured data we have uh, and a couple of assumptions we can make, uh, we could answer to, to questions like that. Uh, if you are not feeling comfortable to work with SparkL, uh, we have predefined a couple of questions. So you can just go see how the SparkL looks like and you can just replace uh, the, the taxonomic group you are, you are working with or the, or the institute you are, uh, institution you are working with. Uh, as a result, uh, OpenBioDiv uh, can link out to, to those sources and actually contains information from all those uh, different databases. And here is a video. Can we play this one, please? You can click on the, in the middle of the screen. It should be embedded or, or either we will link to the, so, okay. Maybe then use the link.
you are if you are interested to, to see more please find me during the coffee breaks i can demonstrate how it actually looks like oh well so view isn't available anymore um Okay, questions? Unfortunately, the video would tell you much more, but... Can I, yeah. can I try to... Can I try to plug in my computer? Yeah. Okay, we have time for that. Maybe one question? Yeah, if there are questions, we can use the time. Yeah, yeah Masha? Thank you. Is it kind of analogous, you know, I mean, just my imagination, like a chat GPT for biodiversity, like you can, you know, <laughs> post a query and it will find you in all the related databases. It's it's not really artificial intelligence tool. It is Sparkwell based tool. Sparkwell allows that kind of complex questions and uh, reveals hidden links in, in the data, which you can not get so easily from relational databases. So it's just a different technology and uh, the questions can be very complex but uh, for those who are not uh, really uh, familiar with Sparkwell they can also query the database through index elastic search index like for example find co-occurrences of two species across the literature and you find those co-occurrences you are directed right to the sentence when these two species are mentioned together yeah, yeah, directly to the resource. That's the key point because all those taxon names in the literature we publish and also plots extract from other journals, they are put in the XML with their identifiers, unique identifiers. So we can find the right place where a taxon name is mentioned. Directly, yes, it is, yeah. Maybe we will see this on the video, hope, hope so. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah, it was more a general, a general question on DOIs because most online platforms who use DOI limit the number of requests by hours that you can do as the same user to a few thousands. And my colleagues tried in Belgium to see what are all the outputs of the Belgians. And of course, with the GB records, we speak in millions. And they couldn't simply do the analysis because they were not allowed to query that many DOIs in one go. So unless they ask a special permission, in practice it doesn't work. And they told us that we have too many DOIs and that we should them put them only at data set or at uh, collection level, but not at specimen level. So they were really bothered by us. And they'd simply filtered out all the GB records in their analysis. And in the end, we were not even in the analysis anymore, just because they limit the number of requests you can do uh, in most online platforms like open air or data site the the platforms open air uh, uh, data site uh, and all this uh, they don't want that you query that many at the same time you both there's a question Donald, online you want to well. comment you both there's a question online Okay, uh, have you tried using LLMs like chat to interact with open? Not yet, not yet, but that's that's really cool question. So, Alan, if you want to participate in such a pilot, we are welcome you to to contact us. Uh, yeah, th sorry, this isn't really a, a response. It's more a follow-on comment in regard to DOIs. Um, I'm, I'm interested, particularly in the context of the things Walter was talking about, about how much confidence you have in the different institutions that need to be part of the network, actually being able to give you sufficiently rich data site metadata. Because my experience is that a lot of institutions have uh, repositories that will happily mint DOIs, but they often have the bare minimum six data set fields, which is basically a title, the link to the landing page and nothing else of use. 
uh, and that makes it really difficult to federate data across DOIs without significant control on the, the publishers. Yeah. Well, here we have, it would be ideal to have all the literature put together. We have here only PenSoft articles, which are more than 10,000, but also treatments extracted from Platzi which are more, that's maybe from 20,000 articles. But the next talk will tell you <laughs> how we will probably solve this problem through the so-called Biodiversity PubMed Central, new infrastructure, which was established in Bicycle. Patrick Roach will tell us more about that if we, maybe we will look at the video now. Where but the bio, but biomedicine literature from PubMed Central and the biodiversity literature come together in full text into one database. But that's the next talk. I will not. Okay, I was thinking more about the specimen DOIs. Uh, specimen DOIs, the, the, well. well. There's many institutions that are all publishing. And they, they might be two billions of DOIs of specimens. I don't know how we'll handle them, actually. Good question. Uh, the video working? Yes, I think it was working. OK. If it takes too much time, maybe. Yeah, it's it's the first slides, but how long it will take, nobody knows. Let's see. Just a couple of seconds and. No voice, but better in this way than, than no video at all. So basically that I would like to show you how <clears throat> you can search for something, you can click on a particular section and and the video is frozen again. No. So we can go and see directly uh, the paper from where this information coming from. Uh, you can do the same thing if you're looking for uh, things that co-occurred in at, um, at one section like two taxonomic names or, uh, for example, taxonomic name and a sequence. Okay, I think, Theodore, I think we have to, to go with the next presentation of Patrick Rush. Patrick, please. So, um, hello everyone. Um, um, I was a bit surprised that um, um, this is this, this demo session.